Do you agree that he has shown us favor? Yes. yes. That he's powerful and true? Yes. yes. He's the only God. Hallelujah. Yes. He's the only one. Amen. Amen. Yes. We, we know. And even if you do not agree, that is who he is. It will not change who God is. Yes. So even if in your heart you're saying, no, I do not agree. God is not worthy of praise. He is worthy of praise. Yes. If you don't praise him, stones will praise him. Hallelujah. If you don't praise him, animals will praise him. If you don't praise him, other people will come and take your place and praise him. So you had better decide to praise him. Yes. He is worthy of praise. Yes. He is worthy of honor. Yes. He is worthy of adoration. Yes. Let's give it to our God. Like the law shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. <laughs> I said, they that trust in the law shall be like Mount Zion, which shall not be moved. Amen. Not that cannot be removed, cannot be moved, cannot Amen. be shaken. Amen. Because the mountain abide forever. As the mountains are around about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth and forever. They that believe, they that trust in the law, they shall be as Mount Zion and they Amen. shall not be moved. Amen. They cannot be moved. Amen. So even if, if people want to move them, they cannot be. So the word is cannot. They that trust in the law say they will be like Mount Zion. They cannot be moved. Amen. Cannot. Amen. So even if men want to, but because the mount cannot be moved, you shall not be moved, and you cannot be moved in Jesus. Amen. So if you trust, so what is the condition for you to not be removed, to not be moved, to not be shaken? What's the condition? Trust. Trust, trust in the Lord. Said so they that trust in the Lord, said so they are like man Zion, which cannot be moved. You will not be moved in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm going to talk about uh, do not be moved. Amen. It's an admonition for you today. Don't be moved. Amen. You know, there, there is this uh, Kenneth Copeland's ministry um, drama I watched that um, they sent one child to go and spy on a group so that they can uh, arrest their leader. And one of them was saying, one of the little ones were talking to the enemy, which is Major Dread or something. That was the name of the enemy. And he said, I am neither moved nor, nor amused by what you're saying, by what you're doing. And Paul also said in the Bible, he said, none of these things move me. He was talking about afflictions, burials, and different things, different challenges that came to him. And he said, none of these things move me. I want that to be your own testimony. Amen. That in spite of things going on around you, in, in spite of situations around you, you can sit down in peace because you trust the Lord and you can say none of these things move me. Amen. And that is your portion, child of God, in Jesus' name. Amen. I say you will not be moved Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. But what are the things that can threaten to move you? Because we can be saying, I cannot be moved, I cannot be moved. But I know that when somebody who knows your button or a situation that has mastered you very well presses your button, you will shake. Yeah. <laughs> but the word works. Yeah. But it's just that when somebody understands how to unnerve you, when you have an enemy that has studied you for so long, they know what to do to you to get you to move. But know today that you should not move. Amen. Not today. See, when you learn the things that we will say today, even when they press your button, even when they understand you, because your trust is now in the Lord, you will not be moved again. Amen. Then you will not indeed become like man Zion, which cannot be moved. Amen. So when you receive that letter of warning, you will not be moved again. Amen. So when you, re when you receive all those warning signs that things are not going on well because you trust in the Lord, you will not be moved. Amen. When you hear that rumor, you will not be moved. When you see those bad 
situations when you see things and you're thinking these things cannot work again you will not be moved Amen. because your trust is now in the Lord Amen. so let's look at the things that can move you Romans 8 35 to 37 it said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? See, that's what we're saying, that nothing should be able to remove us from Christ. Nothing should be able to remove our trust from Christ. It says, shall trouble. So look, just look at the list. Shall trouble, hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. So it's talking about troubles here, that there are troubles you face that can threaten to remove you, but it says it should not be able to separate you from the love of Christ. So even when you face trouble, you will not be separated from the love of Christ. When you face hardship, you will not be separated. When you face persecution, you will still be standing. When famine comes, you will be standing because your God is with you. When nakedness comes, when people are saying there is no money, there is no provision, you will not be moved. Because nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Not even sword, not even pestilence, not even threats will separate you or can separate you from the love of Christ. Amen. So once you understand that, that Christ loves you so much and nothing can separate you from his love, then your trust in his, in, in, in his, in his love for you, your trust in the things that he will do for you will increase and you will not be shaken when you face those things. Amen. So affliction can try to separate you. Amen. Affliction can also shake you. But know that it is just shaking, you will not be moved. Amen. Amen. Persecution can try to shake you. Approval addiction. You want everybody to agree with you. It's not everybody that will agree with you, no matter how right you are. You're doing things, you're showing it to everybody. Is it nice like this? Some wise people may keep quiet, they may not tell you. Other people will tear you down. But should that move you? I'm not saying don't listen to good critique. I'm not saying don't listen to other people's perspective. But I'm saying don't let people cheer you down. Amen. Don't let what people are saying about who you are, about what you're doing, don't let it cheer you down. Don't even let their opinion about your work, about your value, don't let it cheer you down. Don't let it shake you. Because I know that this year, the peace of God that passes all understanding is already encompassing you Amen. and you cannot be moved in Jesus' name. Traditions and culture can try to shake you. This is how it is done. But this is not what God has asked you to do. This is how it is done in this place. But this is not what you know will bring you success. Don't let it limit you. Traditions and culture. You know, this is how it is in this place. So you have to follow it. You don't have to. If it contradicts God's word, if it contradicts God's instruction, do what you know is right. You will not be moved in Jesus. Amen. Prestige can try to also shake you. Because, you know, what will people say? God has said, go and talk to somebody on the road. What will people say if they see me doing such a thing? Jesus spoke to the woman that people considered an outcast because she had had six or five husbands. And now she was on the sixth man who was not even married to her. And Jesus still spoke to her. Traditionally, he was not even supposed to speak to a woman, an unknown woman. But he spoke to her, he gave her the word. Because that was what was required to bring salvation to that city. I say, you cannot be moved. Amen. I say, prestige, what will people say? You know, we're the movers and shakers of time. will not hold you down in Jesus' name. You will break through all barriers to stand and to get your progress and to get your victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Principalities and powers will not move you. Amen. So people may try, people may do things, but you will not be moved. Amen. Because right now your trust is in the name of the Lord, you will not be moved. Amen. Demonic machination will not move you. Amen. No kind of divination will move you because you are in the love of Christ. Amen. Romans says this, what can separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. Say no, nothing. So it doesn't matter what kind of machination and divination is going on on your account, you shall not be moved in Jesus' Amen. name. You will not go under. Amen. Peer pressure, what will my friends say if they find out that this is what I'm doing? If they find out that I'm a Christian, if they find out that I'm worshiping, I'm doing drama. I'll give an example. When we asked the youth last year to do Harvest Fest and we asked them to do a dance, and they were so reluctant, some of them were like, what will our friends say if they see us do this thing, it doesn't look so nice. Mm -hmm. And eventually they agreed to do it, just like Peter, when Jesus said, cast down your net for a drought. 
And the guy is thinking, but I have toiled all night. I know that those fishes are not out here today. Maybe they've migrated. But he said, nevertheless, at your word, I will do it. And he got a miracle. So the same way, after much friction, they agreed to do it. And the very thing that they thought would be embarrassing to them turned out to be fun. Because when they stood up to dance, their friends asked if they could join them to dance as well. I said, that's the kind of thing that God will do for you in Jesus' name. Amen. When it seems that peer pressure, you see, but you have to make up your mind that you will not be moved. You have to make up your mind that I'm trusting in God. I'm going to do what God asked me to do. It doesn't matter how people see me or what people are thinking. Once you've made up your mind and you have signed it with Jesus like that, peer pressure will not move you. Mm -hmm. It can try. People can suggest. You can think about it. But it will not move you because you will... Be like Paul and say, none of these things move me. I have made up my mind to go with Jesus. Will it be that easy? Yes, if you trust in the Holy Spirit. You know, Brother Allah said something today. He said, uh, when we're talking about who, um, if somebody who has quarreled with you is up there preaching, and he says it shouldn't really bother you. It really shouldn't bother you if you have reached that level of maturity. Mm -hmm. If you have also learned all the things we are learning, which is why we are learning. But is it easy? No, it's not easy. But it shouldn't really bother you. So you will get to that point also where peer pressure will not bother you. Yeah. So where you have become matured, you have learned that, look, these things happen like that. It may cross your mind, but will not bother you. It will not be a stronghold in your mind. You won't struggle with it. Some other persons may struggle longer because they have not reached your level of maturity. But some other person will be able to just evaluate everything, pray about it, and move on. You will get there in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, is peer pressure, is it, something to, is it something that is very light? No, it's not light, especially for the younger ones. You want to belong. You want to do what everybody else is doing. You don't want to stand out. But if standing out is what it takes, do it. You shall not be moved. Amen. Do it and see God honor you. Look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, peer pressure should have made them bow down to the idol. Because every other person, they were not the only Jews there. Every other person came and bowed. So I don't know who is, who is asking for you to bow. I don't know what situation is asking for you to compromise. I don't know who is asking you to say, if you do not bow to me, I will not give you what you require. If you do not compromise with me, the power is with me. The decision rests with me. I don't know who has taken that stand over your life today. I said they will bow to you in yeah. Jesus' name. Yeah. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came to that point, they refused to bow. And you know the decision for them, the, the, the choice was bow or burn. But when they 